So I've got my camera view set up now and uh, obviously I've been setting up the render for that as well. So I'm actually going to start with it just as it is with the shadows turned on and I'm going to put this view onto a sheet and, and show you how that works and I'll get a couple of other views onto my sheets as well so we can get an idea how big these views are on our pages. So in the project browser, I've just gone down to find Sheets All and I'm going to go to, uh, to right click there and go to New Sheet. And then click Load. And I'm going to browse to the uh, folder on the P drive this time, Student Resources, or P drive and then EDU DC Interior Design and Revit Library. Remember, if you haven't done this already, you can make a shortcut by dragging that folder over to the grey bar on the left, which I've already done. And notice how there I've got Revit Library already. So that's a shortcut. And once you have that, you don't have to browse every time. You can just click on that button to get to that folder. Uh, so that'll save you, you know, browsing every time. And then here I'm going to go to title blocks. And you can see here, if you remember what the other title block folder looks like, this one has uh, quite a lot more. So I'm going to start with um, one of these A3 title blocks. You can use any that you like, but it's important that it's A3. Uh, yeah, any of these whichever you like to look at. So you can see as you select them, the thumbnail over there will give you a pretty good idea how they look. Even the vertical one's okay if you want to use that. Whatever you like. So I'm going to use this one. Yeah. And then okay, and I've got my title block. So I'll start with that perspective view, 3D view 1. So I'm going to click and drag and then click again to place it on the page. So I'll leave it like that for now and I'll go and make another sheet. So don't be afraid to make as many sheets as you need. It's easy, once you've done the first one especially, you just right click again, sheets all, new sheet, and then because I've loaded that title block already, I don't need to load it again. You can just leave it selected there and click OK a new page. So now I'm going to go back to my bathroom floor floor plan. I'll remember this from the last project. Uh, I'm zooming out there to see everything in that view. So it seems like a lot of you have forgotten how to hide things, which we did before. So I'll just maybe remind you about that. Uh, I'm going to select one of these. Do you remember even what these things are? Close, yes, yeah, similar. It's a similar symbol to a section, but elevation, that's right, yeah, spot on. Yeah, if it's, if it's a section, it's got the line, but yeah, elevations don't have that. So, yeah, so it's an elevation, but yeah, similar to a section. So, I'm just going to select it, and then I want to hide all of them. So I'm going to right click and then hide in view, category. And you'll see all of my elevations are now hidden. This section line uh, I want to keep, but it's too long. So I'm just going to select it. And just to give you a tip there, don't select your section by clicking on the section marker. That doesn't work. You need to click on the line somewhere. And then I'm just going to shorten that tail and the other end, just so it doesn't take up too much room. Um, that's all I might do for now. So, oh no, sorry, I'll hide the reference planes as well. So, just to repeat, with the like I did the elevations, I'll select the reference plane, right click, hide in view, category. If you just want to hide one, that's when you choose elements. But again, 
I want to hide all of them. So hide view category. I'll hide all of my reference planes. And so I've got my um, my floor plane now, uh, just with the things showing that I need without all those extra things that we don't want. So now I'll go back to the sheet. So in my sheets, all you can see, I've actually got three sheets because you'll always start off with a with a default or a, a basic sheet setup, which usually is uh, is going to be too big. Um, do you have any idea how big that that sheet is? The default one. It is, yeah, it is AO. Yeah, so that's that's a big sheet, and uh, it's far too big for this project. So, just like you don't need to worry about making new sheets, you don't need to worry about deleting sheets. So, if you right click on a sheet, you can just go to delete, and it doesn't really affect much else in the project. So then I'll go back to the new sheet I've made, the blank one, at the bottom. Scroll back to find my bathroom floor floor plan that I've just set up and then again click and drag and place it on the page. So how does Vivit know how big to make that floor plan on my sheet? What gives it the size? Sorry. Spot on, yeah, scale, exactly, that's right. So when we select that plan, you can see already it's got the scale there in the tag but also in properties now we can see it over here. So it's 1 to 100. And this is the great thing with Revit, you can just flip-flop between the scales and it, it does everything for you. So if we make it 1 to 50, that'll be much bigger. Double the size, basically. Uh, or quadruple the area. Um, but double in each direction. And if we go to 1 to 200, it'll be much smaller. Or half. So again, I'll go back to 1 to 100. It's important that you realise all of the views that are orthogonal or orthographic have the size set just by using the scarf. So then, what about the perspective? How's it setting the size, do you think? Well, probably it's probably not obvious. It doesn't have a scale, as we've been discussing. So with perspective views, you get this extra option at the top called size crop. So you need to select the view and then go to size crop and then you just type in the size you want it to be. So you've got the first option there, field of view, that will change the camera view. That's a camera setting and we don't want to do that. I just want to change the size so you use the scale option to do that. And then to work with this effectively, you need to have an idea of your page size in millimetres. And anyone who's working in design will know their paper sizes, so it's something you need to remember. You know that that's A3 page size? Yep. 1007, yes, well done, good, yep, that's it. So 420 by 297, so it's 420 across. I want to take up maybe about a bit less than half of this width. Okay, so 200 mil would be a bit less than half, 420. So that's going to be my width. Now, I'm not going to worry about typing in the height because if I click there, it'll do it for me. Because you can see it's got scale lock proportion. So in other words, if I change one value, the other one will change proportionally. Okay, so we can type in the height. Instead, if I type in 100, then the width will, again, adjust automatically. So again, if I click OK now, it'll change the size. And adjust the tag to fit underneath, like that, and there we are. Now, if you want to put a rendered view on, you need to have saved it. So so here, I'd need to go back and maybe render again. And it shouldn't take much longer. There we are, done. Okay, so 
So now I'm going to save to project. And you'll see why the steps I've just done uh, will help if you've done that first. I'm just going to click OK. That's my name, 3D View 1, 2. I'm going to remember that. Close this. Go back to my sheet. So if you haven't seen this, when you save the render, you need to look in the project browser and find that renderings section. And that's where you'll find the ones you've saved. So I'm just going to then drag that render onto my page and notice how it's exactly the same size. Okay, so if you set the size in the perspective view first, trust me, this is much easier. If you want to adjust, if you're trying to adjust it after you've done the render, it's it's a lot more work. Okay, so that's that's going to help you if you again think about using that size crop option. I'll show you how to get it. If you haven't put the, the camera onto a sheet, you can get it with the camera view open just by clicking on the border there and you get that size crop. So do it that way. Set the size before you render and again it'll be much easier when you go to place the renders on the sheet. And so maybe just to um, continue with that, I'll make some more sheets and you should try and put some other types of views onto your sheets. So as usual, open them up first to see how they're looking. And section views, you can see, will actually come up with this um, crop region. And using the borders there, we can bring that in to make the view smaller. We don't even need to see all of this room, we're just working on the bathing space, so if you crop that right back. Uh, you don't, well the levels it, are actually good to have, you want to see those. I know that it's, it's annoying having the text so big, uh, but, uh, but I'll just leave it like that for now and we'll, we'll fix that later. Um, so. Now if I go back to the, well I'll go back to the one that had the floor plan. So if I drag the section across, I can line that up and it should tell me when they're in line. There we go. So I can lay the section out directly below the plan and in line or projecting uh, exactly from the, uh, from the plan there. You can see the walls line up and everything else. So that's a good thing to try. But again, just like the floor plan, the size is set by the scale. So again, we're going to spend more time on this later, but just so you know where we're heading. Um, you need to have, really just to demonstrate your understanding, you need to have floor plans at different scales for this assignment. So you need to have one floor plan at 1 to 100 and another one at 1 to 50. Then the isometric view, again, will have a scale, but then your perspective's white. Uh, no, but you should. It's easy to add those. Yeah, they're in the library, so you can just place them from there. Okay, so just try to make uh, a couple of a sheet or two and put some views onto those sheets. And like everything else in Revit, as you go back and develop up your uh, project. Maybe I will show you a person, because that's an easy thing I can add. Go to architecture and then component. Place component. Load family. And then in the entourage folder. And you've just got male and female. So I'll go for female. And you'll see in properties there are a few variations. So you've got Kathy and Cynthia and Florence and so on. Some of them are seated, some are not. Um, so we're just going to try them out. So I'll try, um, yeah, we'll try Florence. I know she's a sooty type, but we'll check it out. So I'm just going to place it, place it there. And I'll go to my camera view. And we can see in uh, hidden line, if you go to realistic, you'll see the photo version. 
to that here, so she's not quite right for a bar fetch. So I'll select her and then go to another one. So we'll try. Cynthia. Yeah, well, Kathy's, I think, this, oh no, she's the one with the suitcase. Uh, Cynthia, then, must be the seated one. There we are. She's another corporate type, though, so maybe not quite right. Um, I can get her to sit on the seat, though. So just like most of the families, when you select them, you can use space to flip them around. That's working. Um, so maybe I'll uh, I'll copy her and uh, I'll just show you some of the others. So I know Florence. Oh no, sorry, Union. I think is the one that's not bad for a bathroom. There we are. And then Tina as well. Kind of works. Kind of. So look, these are okay, they're more placeholders than anything. If you wanted to get some good people, um, the best option is to use Photoshop and just overlay them on top of your renders. You'll find lots of cut out people online you can just download and easily add with Photoshop. But these are good just to get something quick into your Revit file and get an idea of scale and, and things like that. And uh, as well as I was saying, as you make these changes, that all comes through straight away onto your sheets. So there we are. I'd need to render again to get this one to change, but otherwise all the other views have those people added. Yeah. Oh, so that's just because in, uh, if we go back to here, yeah, in the real-time views, um, the <coughs> graphics aren't, aren't perfect. And uh, yeah, so they don't always give you shadows. In some views they will. But then definitely when you render, they, they'll do perfect shadows. Okay, there we are. Oh, she's floating a bit. You sometimes get a little bit of height. You just bring her down slightly. But the other one, yeah, you can just get your shadows there. So I'm being fussy here, but I know with this one, if you bring it down, I think about 50 mil then her feet touch the ground. There we go. Right, but again, if you really want schmick good looking people, um, Photoshop's often a better, better option. We'll just do a basic setup in Revit and then uh, we can get an idea of the size and the shadows, but the rest here in Photoshop, and uh, then you can do probably more stylish things like silhouettes and you know different types of people than the photo real stuff, which is not the, the current trend. A lot of people actually don't like the, the realistic ones. But again, it's a quick thing you can do with Revit, so I'll um, I'll just save this render just so you can see then how to get the updated um, version. So now I've got to delete this one and I can drag the new one across and just replace it. So the renders don't get updated automatically. Uh, oh yeah, that's a good point. Okay, so yeah, so to change things in the title block, you can select it and then anything there that's blue, usually you can change. So there, if I click on that unnamed, I can call it um, uh, Perspectives. That might be the name of my, my sheet. And we can change the drawing number. So maybe I want that to be, I don't know, 003 or something. Um, and the owner. And the project name. And then if you go onto your other sheets, it'll pick up the things that make sense, but it won't change the things that don't. So we don't want the, the sheet name to be done first because all the sheet names will be different. So this is, uh, I don't know, floor plans or something. Or, uh, and then of course, the drawing numbers are all 
different as well, so that doesn't change, but notice that, that these parts did change. Uh, and then the views are on the sheet, so you can select those and then change the name down here. And so I'll call this uh, or something. And so then it'll change over here as well. So the same with your floor plans, any other view, you can again just select them on the sheet and then click on the name. And so maybe I'll call this bathroom floor plan. And again, just make sure you say yes to this question. Anyway. Uh, sorry, the, oh, you mean the text? Yeah, that's a good point. Okay, so uh, you can, but it's not easy. So I'll go back and just show you. If I open that section view, uh, you can select those levels and then change the position using that, that open circle there. Uh, but then if it's 2D, that won't do anything. So if you see 2D there, you actually have to use the little circle to move it. Uh, and then to change the, um, the tag, again, it's a bit tricky, but you basically have to select the level and look for the, the little break symbol. So that's that elbow, and it's easier now if I select this one where it's not hidden, you can see that comes up straight away. And so because you've got uh, levels that might be close together, especially this ground floor, you can also hide them. So I might just keep the bathroom floor level and then I'll select the ground floor, right click, and this time hide in view elements. So I don't want to hide all the levels, I just want to hide that one, the elements, Hides only that level. So that's probably the best way to do it for now. Uh, to change the text type is uh, a bit more involved. We'd have to look at families and things like that. Well, yeah, if I change the scale, then that's going to change the size. So I'll do that on the sheet just so you can see what happens. So, okay, so if I select this and then change it to 1 to 50, the whole view gets bigger. We don't want that. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so just so it's clear though, in the brief you'll see that there's no recommended scale for your section. So it's up to you. But you might find it's easier to do it 1 to 50. So you can do that if you want to. But it'll just take up more room on the page, so you need to have have uh, maybe a whole page for your section. Right, so uh, and yeah, we'll go over sheets again, but hopefully that'll um, give you enough to get started on that.